That was a bad echo. It should be gone now. <laughs> okay, that is streaming. And I don't know, it's not letting us do both YouTube and Facebook. So we'll just have to upload it to Facebook. Um, but we are live on Facebook. So welcome everyone to the Collaboration of Minority Women Professionals May webinar. I am Samantha Williams, um, founder and president of the collaboration. The collaboration was created, we're going on our third anniversary to uplift, amplify, financially empower black and brown women of color, either in, that's right, it's financial, Anne Marie, you know, if it ain't about the coins, um, either in corporate or in entrepreneurship. So uh, we have a mixed membership of women who have jobs and women who are running their own businesses and building those empires. Um, we have uh, our membership committee just cleaned up our data. And Leticia, how many members do we have? 72. 72 Ooh. members. Nice. I've been saying 60-ish. I was wrong. 72 official members. So check us out. We are now international. We have our first international member, uh, Latoya, who checks in from London. So we are very proud to have uh, Latoya and membership can tell you more, but we're in about nine states. She's, not, the first, she's not your first person from London. She, <laughs> are you a member, Anne-Marie? Well, you're on mute. You're, you're, are you on mute for a reason? <laughs> Wait, I go on mute every time we start talking about membership. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I will be joining you. Oh, Amber, Amber, you'll be our second international member checking in from, um, where are you, Rocky Hill, Connecticut? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're funny. Rocky Hill by way of uh, London. <laughs> yes. That's okay. You still got the accent. So we'll believe you. We trust you. So uh, with our growing membership, we have just established committees. So we welcome, invite all of our members to join at least one committee. We have the membership committee. We have a book club, the CMWP book club, which is led by Randy McCray. Uh, we have the events and promotions permit committee. I'm lying. Um, we have in marketing, the marketing and promotions. We have events and programming. That's what it is. Um, and I feel like there's like one other committee. Let me quickly go over the Slack. I think that's it. Um, and then we, our committee members are all on Slack, which provides another way for the ladies to communicate, right? We have a general Slack channel where everyone can, every, they, they're in there chatting it up. Um, so please, if you're not a member yet, we welcome you to join. I'll be putting the link to the website in the chat so you can check out our website. Um, we are building the website uh, committee page um, now, um, but we welcome you. Um, membership is, we have three levels of membership. If you are a student of any level, it is $60 a year. If you are a professional, it's either $15 a month or $125 a year. Um, and if you are more seasoned and you would like to come back, you're over the age of 65 and would like to mentor, you're not there yet, Anne-Marie. I, I saw you look up. You're not there yet. You're not that old. Um, then you can come in as a, a mentor because uh, we have ladies who are seeking that guidance. So I will put the link in the chat. Um, and then also, Leticia, I will let you do your intro. Hi, uh, my name is Leticia Douglas. I am the vice president of the, the collaboration. I am also uh, still in the corporate world as a data scientist um, in the aerospace industry. I am also a real estate investor and just passionate about all things finances and investing. And crypto. The teacher is going to be a guest speaker from one of my Tuesday networking calls and talk to us about crypto. Uh, Nay, you're in the car. Do you want to say hi? Yes, I could say hi. So I'm literally trying to make it home to sit in the meeting. <laughs> I got like sidetracked at work. It's been crazy. My name is Nay. I am a co-founder as well, a membership chair. But my day job is I work at People's United Bank. I am a VP, branch manager, and been in banking for over 15 years. And um, so if you have any banking question, I'm your person. I'm excited to, you know, for this uh, May uh, webinar. Yes. 
Awesome. I forgot to give my intro, but I think literally everyone here knows what I do. So that's fine. Um, that is true. Nodding. <laughs> you're all nodding. Stop it. I'm Sammy and I run mad companies. Um, so <laughs> today we have a special guest, Tamar Drawn, comma LPC, comma MA. Um, I know this because I just finished working on her capability statement. Um, so Tamar is here and I'll let you do your intro because I will mess it up. So Tamar, welcome. Oh, thank you, Sammy. And can I just say my capability statement is amazing. It's amazing. Everyone who I show it to, they're like, wow. And that's what I want, a wow effect. So my name is Tamar Drawn and I am a licensed therapist and entrepreneur. I run a company called Phoenix Professional Services. At Phoenix, we provide trauma recovery using mind-body techniques. Some of our services include outpatient counseling, community <laughs> development, and corporate wellness. So today, I'm really excited to talk to you guys about what does it mean to mind our mental. When you heard that topic, and um, Sammy, I'm not really close to my device, so I'm going to be really asking questions for a little bit. And if you could uh, read it out to me, that'll be great. Sure, um, Tay, you can put me to work. That's great. Thanks, Sammy. <laughs> All right. So, you know, when you saw the title, Minding Your Mental, what drew you here? Why are you here today, professional women? Throw it in the chat box. What drew you to it? Why are you here? What are you looking to hope um, to get out of today? Can they come off mute and say it too, or you want them to just talk? Yeah, that would be great. It, this is an interactive discussion, ladies. So Barb says, self-care is really, really important to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone I, else? Why, why did you join today? Me, burnout. Very honest, very normal. Yes, it is. I'm Yolanda over that. Says, would you say, Iris? I'm over that mostly, though. I'm good. I had three people. Yay! Here's the growth. Here's the growth. Um, let's see. Yolanda says techniques for balancing as I add more to my business life. Takia says Absolutely. self care and balance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jessica says, I'm a personal development coach and advocate for mental health, wellness, and self-care. Psych nerd also. There's a lot of nerds in this room, Jessica. Welcome. Welcome. Um, excellent. Excellent answers. Yolanda is a recovering workaholic. Uh, Felicia Hi, says, life can be overwhelming, especially now. I am seeking tips for balancing it all. Kita says she's overwhelmed. Absolutely. All of those are normal answers and, and compound that with being a woman and compound that with being in the professional industry, compound that with perhaps running a business. And then if you're Black, that causes another layer. So I'm so happy to hear the honesty that we have here because this collaboration is filled with not only nerds, but really powerful women, women who create change. And so a lot of times when we're working with women who create change, really, really intelligent women, we have this ability where we give more than we bring into ourselves. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about money and I'm not talking about material things, but I'm talking about the inner work that keeps us humble, um, sane, grounded, balance, resilient to show up in the world and be that mindful professional. So now I want you to just throw it in the comments or speak to it. What is your title? Who are you, darling? Who are you? Mine, I like to, I went through a couple titles. You know, I like to make it nice and strong so you get it. Yes. Um, if, I think if, if you're a professional, if you're an entrepreneur, you can give yourself your own titles too. Don't forget that. Um, before we get to the new comments, uh, Shirley says, I deal with someone who says their mental is off. Um, Vanessa says, always open to get tools to help me feel calm and capable every day. Barb's title is founder and CEO of Higher Power Coaching and Consulting. Shirley, 
I'm the director of integrative medicine and the chief financial officer and the entrepreneur and the maid. And I say that to say we all have really, really important jobs. And as entrepreneurs and as professionals, the responsibilities that we have just in the workplace can create such trauma and distortion to who we are that it trickles over into other environments and vice versa. So real quick, I want you to think about your job and I want you to tell me three of the most tumultuous tasks that you have. What are your biggest responsibilities that keep you up at night that make you get up and get to it? What are your biggest responsibilities? Just throw that in there. Something that you're really focused on right now. Kids. The teacher says kids, biggest responsibility. Shirley says starting a business. Anne Marie, overall agency management, fundraising, program development. What else, ladies? Barb. I am still laying the foundation of my business. So I feel like I'm building a bridge while walking over it. <laughs> Aren't we all? I always say we're, that's me. That's me. we're opening our parachute on the way down. Like, right. Yeah. 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 That's me. Yeah. And so that's what it's like in the career world, right? It never stops. And if you want to stay on top of the game with the changing landscapes, you have to be innovative, right? You have to learn all the new systems. You have to learn all yeah. the techniques you have to learn all the new psycho psychology behind marketing and, and and connecting with people so push that to the side right because that's just work and life goes on who are you outside of that forget your title I no longer care about your title I want to know who you are and where else you have to show up I already heard Takiya say motherhood so she was ahead of exactly where I was going so what else do you have to balance it doesn't only have to be children. It could be a relationship that you need to balance better because you're sucked out at work. It could be a relationship with yourself that you need to better balance because you're sucked out at work. A lot mm -hmm. of us too, especially women of color, as soon as we start to succeed, that imposter syndrome comes for us. Things from our childhood comes to try to tell us something and we have to fight. But did we learn how to fight? Do we know how to fight? And I'm talking about the good fight, you know? that sitting down with yourself and reaffirming yourself and releasing all that does not serve you. Quiet in the brain, the brain, all the compartments, the one that's talking about the grocery list, the one that's talking about the, the, the Dodge coin, the one that's talking about you know, what happened at the family function, the one that's talking about what happened at work. Do you know how to shut all those compartments down and get into a place where you're near sleep, where your body's rejuvenating itself so that when you come out of that, it's like you just woke up and your brain has a fresh start. So who are you outside of that wonderful title you just gave me? Throw it in the box. Are you a mother? Are you a partner to someone? Are you a grandmother? Are you a great grandmother? Do, do you have side hustles outside of your primary career? Who, what other titles do you wear? All right, let me read some of these comments. So Jessica from before was saying ditto to Shirley starting a biz. Um, I missed that comment. Um, Kita says children times four plus emergency rooms, schools, non-compliance, trying to please everyone except self. Rosa says motherhood, co-parenting, family. Felicia says getting acclimated to a new area, part-time work and building my own business, trying to find my niche. Anne-Marie holding the space for black businesses who need BBA. Oh, Anne-Marie, Lord. Vanessa says family. Kita, Letitia says to Marquita, facts. <laughs> Anne Marie says mother, grandmother. Now we're getting to who people are. Mother, grandmother, wife, self. Takia, mom, wife. Every damn thing for everybody. Anne Marie, yes, Takia. Jessica, a creative. Shirley, wife, mother, grandmother, advocate. Barb, I'm a person in recovery. You can tell Barb is a coach. I'm a person in recovery. I'm a sweetheart. I'm a friend. I'm a homeowner. I'm a community manager at Known and community engagement manager for innovation to impact at Yale. Keita, wearing multiple masks on a daily basis. I'm not speaking about the COVID mask, but layers underneath. Mm -hmm. Code switching, being accepted by society when deep down you're not adapting at all. 
just frustrated with these titles and can't find balance. All right, Tay, you asked for it. There you go. I'm, I'm That's it. Tay. That's the honesty, right? That's why we're here. We could talk about quarterlies and annuals all day, but are we really talking about how to survive so we could enjoy this wealth that we're trying to create, right? Or that we're creating. So these are the little monsters inside of us that have to come out of us. So I'm here for it and I appreciate you and thank you. So now I'm wondering how hard is it for you to balance all of that? The career side, hey, DJ, the career side, and then your and personal life, really, and then the things that matter most to you. How well, easy is it for you to handle that? Don't even answer it out loud, answer it in your mind. Because some of us, we show up and we look pretty good, but we're not even going at 50, 65%. And if we can push ourselves and find different ways to rejuvenate ourselves, we could actually become the person that we truly want to become, the higher version of, of ourselves. And only we know that, not even our supervisor or you know, our, our mothers and our fathers know that version of ourselves that we want to become. So how do we even know if our mental needs mining? And what does mining really mean? It means pouring into, it means stabilizing, it means checking on. How do we know when a baby needs help? Things start to happen. So one of the um, things start to happen with the child, they're either gonna cry, they're either gonna fuss, they're either gonna be in some type of distress. For us, even though we might not talk about it, as we listen carefully to our body, our body is going to scream at us and tell us something is wrong. In different areas, and they're called energy centers. On one leg of spirituality, they're called chakras. On another ledge of science, they're called bodily organs, right? And they just align right down in the center of us. The one that we know that we can connect to that has energy and electricity and sound, the one that everybody knows make a noise is the heart. Everything inside of us creates a sound, it creates a harmony, it creates an energy, it creates a flow. And when different experiences happen to us, which happen every single day, everybody can get it. When different experiences happen to us, it throws off that rhythm. And when the rhythms in our body and our power centers are thrown off, especially in the core and the womb for women, we then create dis-ease. We are no longer in ease. And so we have to do things, right, to create that ease again, to create that harmony to come back. Sometimes we go get medication and we don't really get to the root cause. We just got to get mm -hmm. the pain away. Tay, we have a comment. Yeah, yeah. Vanessa says, when I feel my jaws clench, I know I'm starting to get stressed out. Plus, I need to step away and talk. I need to step away and talk and take a walk around my neighborhood to get some fresh air. Vanessa's on point because that leads me to where I was going. Do you know where you feel or hold the tension, the stress in your body? Mm -hmm. And if you already know, because we're going to do a little mindful body scan in a moment, we're going to do a little bit of breath work. And I'm going to show you one, two or three simple yoga poses that you are in a sedentary lifestyle, which a lot of us are because of COVID, <coughs> punching COVID in place. Um, you got to get up and move. You got to get up and move. And you have to circulate yourself, rush the blood to your head and bring it back up. And it really causes a positive impact. But if you know where you hold your tension in your body from head to toe, when you are upset, when you are emotional, when you are frustrated, when you are anxious, where does your body harbor its pain? And it doesn't have to be one spot. And it doesn't have to be, don't think it's silly to hold it in your pinky toe. That's you. <laughs> so where do you hold the stress in your body? Because I want you to hold this area in your mind when we're going into the meditation and the breath work. For me, it's the lower back. And sometimes when it's time for me to be quiet, I get a little tingling in my throat like I've talked too much. I need to, to fall back and be more of a listener. So... Felicia agrees with Vanessa. She says, yes, I do the same thing, teeth grinding. So maybe that's where it's showing up for Felicia. Um, she says, teeth grinding, when I sleep too, I walk daily and it really makes a difference. During that time, I pray, think, scream when no one is around. She's laughing. Takia says, my back, my head, my heart. 
Anne Marie says back, shoulders, and stomach. Mm, very good. We know ourselves and we listen to ourselves. And if we go into a deeper listening, not only are we giving our bodies the compassion that we need, we're also tapping into healing. A, a part of recovery, no matter what you're recovering from, a, a major accident, drug, a big part of recovery is rest, literal mm -hmm. rest. And we as Americans, as working women, I don't know how good you do with sleep, but I have to be very deliberate about my sleep hygiene because it, it, it impacts everything about my personality the next day. So how do we know if we're struggling with some signs of depression or anxiety? Anxiety is a physical thing and it grows into a mental thing. Some signs of anxiety is uh, the tight tension in your chest, sweaty palms, nervousness, feeling as though you're gonna vomit, lightheaded. And what causes anxiety? Fear, right? Fear of the unknown. And maybe you do know what that last experience was like and if you're fearful to re-experience it again. So that's some symptoms of anxiety. Some symptoms of depression before we get into some of this coping stuff. Some symptoms of depression. One is loss of concentration. You used to be able to concentrate very, very well and now you just can't keep your mind on one thing at a time. You're easily distracted. You're no longer interested in the things that you used to be interested in. You don't want to go out. You don't want to talk on the phone. You don't want to connect with your family. Um, you don't even really want to cook dinner. Uh, perhaps you'll spend a little extra hours at work. Um, uh, it's not a big deal to tuck the kids in. They're really big now. You're just letting go of the things that you once valued deeply inside of you. Um, other signs of depression could be uh, poor eating habits. You could be overeating or you could be undereating. Both are signs of depression. Um, and also listening to the people around you. If you have people around you that love you and you love them and you trust them, they're usually good at letting you know you're off. I heard someone say they had a friend who says, my mental is off. That's even better for someone to be able to speak that out. Because one of the first things that you have to try to do in recovery is see, do I have good support systems around me? So by a show of uh, emoji or something, how much of us are willing to identify that I may struggle with a symptom of depression or anxiety based on the reality of life? I'm going to raise my hand. So today I'm going to show you a few things. And I um, invite you to really practice this so that you can feel it for yourself. And it's not just something you heard about and you saw, but you're able to have your personal experience with it. So I think I'm going to um, begin with a breath work exercise. And breath work is good for quieting the mind, pivoting yourself. Breath work brings oxygen into the brain and it slows the brain down. And breath work is good to calm the body down, and prepare you to do something courageous, or even protect you if you needed it to. Breath work shows up for me when something shocks me on the outside. I'm able already to tap into myself and begin a breathing technique that's going to make me calm down externally and internally. Usually when someone's anxious, you can tell. When someone's nervous, you can tell. Because those are normal things. But being able to handle that internally, not with a tool, not with anything, but your breath and your body, that's how you really become the master of yourself. So um, for this breath work exercise, I'm gonna bring in a sound bowl. A sound bowl is an indigenous tool that creates a resonance that harmonizes the body. So I want you to keep your spine up, make sure you're sitting in an upright position. And when you're ready, I want you to allow your eyes to close or bring your stare down to the floor. You're going to prepare to do a breath work exercise, inhaling for the count of four, exhaling for the count of five or six. Beginning with an inhale on one, 
three, two, one. Inhale for one, two, three, four. Exhale for one, two, three, four, five. Inhale for one, two, three, four. Exhale for one, two, three, four, five. Inhale for one, two, three, four. Exhale for one, two, three, four, five. Inhale for one, two, three, four. Exhale for one, two, three, four, five. Relax the breath and have an easy breath, keeping the eyes low or closed. Notice the shifts in your mind, your body. As you prepare to go in for your second round, beginning with an inhale of one, three, Two, one. Inhale for one, two, three, four. Exhale for one, two, three, four, five. Inhale for one, two, three, four. Exhale for one, two, three, four, five. Inhale for one, two, three, four. Exhale for one. Two, three, four, five. Relax the breath. Have an easy breath. And when you are ready, open your eyes and provide some feedback on what that really short breath work exercise was for you. Were you able to think of anything else? Was anything bombarding your mind? Or were you um, able to focus in on the breath? Did you feel anchored? I felt relief in my lower back. Mm -hmm. Anyone else before we move into the next breath work exercise? Okay. Leticia says she almost fell asleep. <laughs> um, Jessica says breathing is my gateway to full on meditation. Vanessa says sense of calm. Felicia says refreshing and more focused. Absolutely. And different techniques give you different feelings. There's techniques that will bring you down to a state of sleep and there's techniques that get you up and going. Um, and there are techniques that um, keep you grounded. So depending on the kind, sometimes they call it, you know, uh, coffee and water. So the coffee would be the upper, you know, uh, water would be the, the, the middle, and I think there's tea. Um, another breath work exercise we're gonna do is called the trauma breath. You know, sometimes we go through something and we get really riled up and we have to move to the next thing very fast. We don't have time to decompress. There's breath work. Breath work is an excellent way to detoxify our minds and actually create like cellular change. So another breath work exercise we're going to do is called the trauma breath. You're going to do this count on your own. I'm just going to start you. And once you're done, you stop. Um, we're going to go for maybe 10 breaths. Once you're done, just type done so we know everyone's done so we don't interrupt anyone that's doing it. So for the trauma breath, you're gonna do three forceful inhales, one long exhale. So it's gonna go. So you're inhaling fully three times, filling the chest to capacity, pulling that air from the stomach to the chest. And you're going to do one long exhale. So let's begin that together. And we're going to go for 10. So remember, one is three inhales, one long exhale. That's one. And um, you don't have to try to inhale too, too much. You know, go with what your body allows you to. So let's begin together doing the trauma breath, beginning on the count of one, three, two, one, inhale, 
inhale, inhale, long exhale, 10 times. And if you want to begin by uh, dropping a comment, what was that like for you? Sometimes people are not used to bringing in that much breath. And so it's a little bit of a struggle and they're like, oh, I'm not doing that. That's weird. You know, that's exhausting. Or they're like, oh, that cleanse, that, that exhale was winning. I want to do that again. And tell me how you feel after. Do you feel up or do you feel sleepy? Like it made me tense. I don't, I don't think I like that. Okay. I like the other one. <laughs> Tay's always trying to understand my brain. So <laughs> the teacher says, the I, I want to know, like, what was the rhythm of the breath set? No, <laughs> okay. The teacher says, the exhale feels good. Anne Marie says it was cleansing and I feel sleepy. Kita, oh no, Felicia says uplifting, like my lungs were expanding to full capacity. Kita says, fat girl over here trying to catch my breath. Jessica says, this was much more calming for me, great for releasing the tension I hold. Takia says, refreshing. Excellent, excellent. And I love that Sammy is able to be like, I don't like that because you have to find a technique that's good for you and that works for you. That's why you have to have like a plethora of tool or a self-care toolkit. So I'm gonna do one more breath work and then I'm gonna show you a few simple yoga moves that are just gonna feel rejuvenated to the lower back and the whole entire body. And we're gonna end with a mindful meditation body scan. So, um, The next one we're gonna do is called the humming bee. I had to pick. It's called the humming bee exercise. It's another one that you have to count by yourself. And the humming bee is like my favorite to get grounded. Sometimes after I have a clinical session where I'm going through really harsh trauma um, and I gotta then jump to someone else, I probably have a minute or two between my clinical sessions. And so I go into the hummingbird um, and sometimes even when I'm talking <laughs> to my friends and I'm getting a little excited, they'll be like, Tay, go, go hit your bowl, go meditate, ground yourself because I get hyper, but that's not the point. So the next one is called the humming bee exercise. So this is just a simple inhale and exhale, right? But on your exhale, you're humming. Mm -hmm. You're closing your mouth, you're humming and you're letting that vibration just kind of penetrate through you. 
to go in for a deeper feel, you're gonna use your thumbs and you're gonna close off your airway so that vibration stays all up and not yet, Sammy, not yet. Um, <laughs> so that vibration stays all up and through you. I want you to find the right level that you want. I used to hum very soft and I was like, oh, how melodious. Now I'm like, mm, because I've grown to want it a little bit stronger. So find the hum level that's good for you. We're going to do this five times. Remember, you're, in, you're going to close off the air, inhale, and on your exhale, you're humming. Mm, mm. Okay, say the instructions one more time. Inhale, exhale, and hum. Keep the ears closed off the entire time. Do that five times. Inhale, exhale, hum. And once you've done that, give me some feedback on what that was like for you. What was it like to actually use sound? Because you just did sound healing on yourself. You use the sounds that create harmony, which the most healing sound is your voice. Even more healing, your mama's voice. But you get where I'm going with this. And the sound doesn't have to come out in words. It can come out in tone. So what was that like for you? I like it. It was interesting. What was interesting about yeah. it, Iris? Well, see, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm used to doing like the breathing and all that, yoga and stuff like that. And so like a lot of times, like when you first start, it's hard to like meditate, you know, your mind be different places. But when you can kind of focus on like a sound or like a picture or whatever, it makes it better for you, you know, to stay focused. So it was, it's helping you focus. I mean, I'm good at it now, but I can see how that will help you like ground yourself. And Letitia said different. What was different about it, Letitia? Uh, I don't know. I guess it's just, I'm not used to hearing myself hum. <laughs> so it was, uh, yeah, it was interesting. Mm -hmm. I thought it was, I thought it was loud. Sounds like Sammy. <laughs> What's that mean? Jessica said, yes, it was very grounding. Hey, can you, I don't know what grounding is. What, what does that mean? It was very grounding. You know, some, have you ever felt scattered? Yeah. Have you ever felt pulled in many directions? So Every grounding day. is feeling whole, yeah. feeling in full control, feeling connected with your mind and your body, feeling refreshed and recharged. Yeah. Yeah. It's just putting you back in the present moment, basically, is what you're doing. Yeah. Mm hmm the focus, the focus is on the, the sound. Felicia Absolutely. said, it's like consoling myself from within. Yeah. That's exactly what that, do, that, that does. You know, everything we need, they say is inside of us. And this is just a few techniques out of a, a hundreds of techniques. And that's why we have to open up our minds and go out there and find what's good for us. Um, and don't be afraid to try different things. Something as simple as breath work could lead you to a whole new idea for your business. It could remove something out of you that you didn't know was there that was blocking you. Sometimes when you work with a practitioner, a practitioner that's competent, breath work can unravel things that you didn't even know was raveled up within you just by using the consciousness of the breath. 
and exploring the body with that. So this can get very deep. I'm just trying to keep it on a basic level. So some yoga moves that are really good for you. Is anyone going to actually physically try this? Or I can just show you a few. Oh, they're going to try it, Tay. Who's going to get up and try it? Anne-Marie, Anne -Marie, you made us do moving and all that in the class. Come on, Anne-Marie. <laughs> Come on. So I'm just going to show you a few, you know, ones that don't really take a lot of strength and all this bending and moving because yoga essentially is not really about that. It's about building a relationship with your body and not comparing yourself to no one else and going within to build the strength that you need. So I want to do a really simple one. And it's called cat cow. Anyone know what cat cow is? And cat cow might feel awkward, but it's excellent for the spine. It's excellent for the lower back. Let me know if you can if you can see me. Can you see me? Yes, we yeah, can you're see good. you. All right. So right now I'm in tabletop. My mm -hmm. hands, my wrists are aligned with my shoulders. My knees are aligned with my hips, and my back is straight. And my watch is tight. And so that is tabletop. Holding yourself in that position in full stillness is yoga. Now to do cat, you're going to tuck your tailbone in, arch that back up, and bring your gaze to your navel. You're going to feel that in your lower back and your shoulders and your spine. You're arching that back up like a cat that's scared. You're looking down between your legs and you're pulling in the tailbone. This is cat. Cow, you drop that back, drop that stomach to the floor. Tailbone goes up to the air. Chin goes up. That is cow. And mm -hmm. the way to do this, it's many different ways, but is to do each move on a breath, whether it's your inhale or your exhale, mm -hmm. and taking it nice and slow so you can feel every movement in your body. Mm -hmm. This is cat cow. Inhale on cat, exhale on cow. Now we're going to go back into tabletop. And from tabletop, we're going to go into downward dog. That simply means you curl your toes under, you pick those knees up off the floor, your gaze is down at your ankles, and you can walk here. And then you can come back down into tabletop. Another great move, while into tabletop, making sure you're in alignment, wrist aligned with shoulders, knees aligned with hips. You reach forward with the left hand and you go underneath you and you reach to grab your right ankle, bringing that left shoulder down to the floor, extending that right hand straight and breathing here deeply into the back. Coming out of that slowly, going back into tabletop for a breath. Whatever you do to one side of the body, you do to the next. Reach forward with the right hand. Swing that right hand down underneath you, grabbing that left ankle, bringing that right shoulder down to the floor, extending that left hand and breathing here. Releasing back into tabletop. Downward dog. You can walk or jump to your hands. A nice slow walk is fine, or a nice jump is also fine. This is forward fold, bending the knees into chair pose. Pray your hands. Up on the toes, if you're bad, no. <laughs> And that's just a few yoga poses that gets the blood pumping and going. So now we're gonna close out before we try to catch any questions by doing a mindful guided meditation body scan. Mm. 
So I I'll be using that. a rain stick and this will be pretty. I'll be using a rain stick. It's gonna be brief. So let's begin by finding ourselves sitting in an upright position. Closing our eyes or bringing our gaze down to the floor. Beginning with a collective inhale on one, three, two, one. Inhale, filling the chest with air to capacity. Exhale. Repeating this, keeping the mouth closed. Inhale, slowly filling the chest with air until it is full. Exhale slowly, keeping the eyes closed. Tell yourself, to relax. Imagine for a minute a sky filled with clouds, clouds floating by, different shapes and sizes floating across the sky. Notice them. Slowly begin to place all your distractions onto the cloud. One by one. Place your distractions onto the cloud. Your worries, your fears. Allow them to float away from here. Do not judge them. Just notice them and allow them to float away. Bring your attention to your forehead. Unfurling the brow, relax your forehead and your eyebrows. Unclench the jaw. Relax the nostrils. Relax your tongue. Allow it to fall flat. And slowly begin to relax the throat. The shoulders are relaxed. Slowly begin to relax the chest, relaxing the heart, melting downward, relaxing the stomach behind the navel, into the hips. Slowly begin to relax the thighs, the knee cap behind the knee, down into the legs. The calf and the shins are relaxed. The ankle. The bottom of your feet. And the tips of your toes are relaxed. Now notice the breath as it flows through you from the tip of your nose up the nostril, down the back of the throat. Down the spine, into the legs, returning back up the legs, back up the spine. A cool breeze back up the throat, down the nostril to the tip of the nose. You are grounded and head to toe. Slowly begin to rub your hands together, creating peace. Creating energy, rub your hands together and place those warm hands right on your eyes, feeling the energy that lives within you slowly. Open your eyes. 
And when you are ready, share as you like. So we have comments. Um, Kita did the yoga. Shirley said she did that in high school. The teachers that I've done that, it feels great. So thank you so much. I know that um, we had a question emailed in and I wanted to make sure I took a minute to answer that if I could remember what they are. I think one was, you know, what's the difference between feeling really sad and depression? We go through feeling really sad sometimes. That's normal. When it is prolonged and persistent and it can't go away and you can't kick it, it transmutes into depression. And so that's the major difference. You can feel really bad, but that's usually short term. Maybe a few days. It can go like that, right? But if it's going on a few weeks and you just can't kick it, and it's impacting how you show up, how you treat other people and yourself, we're moving more into depression. I think another one was, what is the difference between a therapist, a psychiatrist, and a psychologist? Was it? Yep. Okay, so all those people can do therapy, but all of them don't focus in on therapy, talk therapy, traditional therapy, um, but they are able. Now the concentration is the psych psychiatrists focus on medication. That is what they focus on. If they feel like it, or if it comes to the need that their client doesn't have a therapist in the community, they could give them talk therapy. Is it ideal? I don't think that's what they would rather do. All these people work in collaboration too. So psychiatry focuses on medication. Psych the psychologist does specialized testing. So if I as a therapist say, you know, I really think this, this kid has um, bipolar disorder and for some reason I'm not confident in my findings and I need someone to test this brain and let me know what they see, the psychologist does the testing and assessment. They too could have a therapy session, but this, that's just not their concentration. So the therapist does not provide uh, medication and they don't do extensive testing. We uh, study different modalities that allow us to help people move through past experience or isolated experience or even fears that, that haven't come yet. So that's the difference. The other one is how can generational trauma be healed if everyone in the family is unwilling to work together and or go to therapy? That was such a good one because I think that oftentimes people think healing generation generational trauma means we got to bring everyone together. Mm -hmm. That would be dope, right? That would be ideal. Mm -hmm. So kumbaya. But everybody is on another. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't come. Everybody's not ready. Everybody's not ready to handle that. So what do you do? You work on the one thing that you can change mm -hmm. yourself. If it requires you to build different boundaries around your family members so they don't disrupt your healing, you might have to do that. If it starts with you and your children and your partner, you might have to do that. It could mean shifting the relationship and that might hurt. But when you're ready to heal, you're ready to notice what does not serve you. And it's not to say cut them off everyone's gone. It's to say, I know how much of me I can give you, I can afford before it's too late. And so generational trauma starts with yourself, change your DNA, focus on how you are. So that's my answer to that. And the last one from that email, what is the best way for BIPOC business owners to handle microaggressions and racist encounters in a digital space and or in person while they are conducting business? That's so heavy, that's so real, that's so needed. So I was researching that and I'm gonna send Sammy the link and I think it's a good read for everybody, but I think I'm gonna say something and then I open it up to us. 
because there are amazing women in here, business women, and I'm sure somebody in here has dealt with that um, or have some expertise on that. Um, for me, I think sometimes I have to think about my setting. You know, if I'm in a place where I'm in an audience, I may not have the proximity to address the situation right there, but I'm going to address it, whether I'm going to write a letter to the company, whether I'm going to reach out to the different departments that service that. Um, another thing that I like to do, and sometimes you might not be ready to do this, right, because you have to have good control over your emotions, is be able to openly and calmly ask that person to help you understand what they were saying, to double check and make sure that what they're saying is what they're saying and invite them to unpack that with you. But now you have to be unpackable. You have to be ready to have this dialogue calmly and in full control of yourself. Um, also, uh, I would read on that. That is something that um, there's so much new knowledge out there and different techniques and different ways to support yourself. This is workplace trauma and we don't need that. I mean, we have enough to deal with. So um, I'll open and I'll send Sammy the link. It's from Harvard Business School. It's um, written by a woman of color, PhD level. It was amazing the amount of things she gave. I should have put it in the chat, but I'm um, technically uh, inefficient. So um, what do you guys have for that response? Nothing yet. They're typing. I'm send it to you right now, Sammy. Yes, and it'll go out. And um, Tay, um. We welcome you back to do this again because it was so great and I forgot to record it. So we welcome you. <laughs> we... <laughs> and this is what happens when you record on Zoom now. So I couldn't I couldn't do it during the exercise. Yeah, no problem. So I, I couldn't do that during the exercise. So we'll just have to have you back, Tay. Yeah, no problem. Could I um, tell everyone about my yoga class I have tonight at 7.30 p.m.? I'll send the link to Sammy. Maybe she'll send it out with uh, the business journal article. If you're interested in practicing in a little bit more deeper and a little bit more hands-on, um, check my class out tonight. And um, I'm also launching a product that I'm going to share with the camp. And it is a treasure chest of mindfulness. So I'm looking forward to hearing some feedback and um, I'm lo also looking for one or two people that I could send this to as a gift so that they can unbox and give a testimonial. So I'll be sending out that link to Sammy as well so that you could look at it. And if you're interested, um, you let me know like, yeah, I I I'll try your box out. Um, it's filled with all kinds of goodies, a sound bowl, a, a live plant, an ebook from me and a few more things. So thank you guys for the opportunity and um, I'll see you soon. Any questions for Tay before she goes? Tay, you've been working on that box so long. I am so proud of you to see it execute. Congratulations. Is that the box? Congratulations. Uh, look at this. Tay is dope. What's in the box? What's in the box? Do you see my anniversary? <laughs> Um, I got a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, I want to know, like, do you, how do I say this? Do you, like, consult with people and, like, recommend, like, certain types of holistic um, products for, like, certain things? Yeah, absolutely. I do consultations. Now, not for herbals, herbal things, but different techniques and different things that you can do. If I don't provide it, there's a whole community out there that we can find. Okay. Felicia says these exercises are definitely relaxing. Thanks so much for your valuable info. Anne Marie says, thank you. I will unbox for BBA. And Anne Marie, I've been telling Tay to become a member. 
Yeah. I did. I did. I promised. Did? Okay. The last okay. time you yelled at me, I did. And it said June, July 11th, the next meeting or something like that. It's once a month. 7.30 a.m. I'm going to be there. 7.30 we be here, 7.30 a.m. You, you're late if you get there at 7.30. It starts at 7. <laughs> oh, that's right. My Tuesday meeting is 7.30. It's 7 o'clock. One, one Wednesday a month. Thank at you, Anne-Marie. Samantha, you're no good. <laughs> this is why I need hey, your therapy. I have, I have to run, but that was great. Thank you so much. Is your yoga every Wednesday at 7? Every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m., and meditation is every Monday at 8 p.m. Okay, Tamar, you need to put that in uh, our Facebook group. Yes, put it in the group, in the uh, Facebook group. Put in the chat too, your contact information so people can contact you. Okay, I'll do that right now. Um, Jessica says, thanks for your wisdom. Kita says, thank you, smiley face, wonderful information. Takia says, this was so helpful. Shirley says, I like the trauma breathing. I don't like it and my mama likes it. I don't know. I like the, the first one we did though. Which one was that? The the three or four in. I think that was the first. I don't know. You That's the trauma me. breath. No, oh, so, so not that one. The one before the trauma breath. The start, where was the startup? I no longer remember. <laughs> I just dropped some information in there for you guys. My box so, release. Instagram. Samantha Williams is asking, what is the Facebook group? Samantha Williams, who, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's your doppelganger. It is. I asked her, Samantha, who, which Samantha are you? All of Tay's oh. information is in the chat. I, let me go grab, Samantha won't tell me who she is, but I'll go to Facebook and grab the um, the group link. Oh, why, why can I hear me? We can hear you fine, Sammy. Wait. The Facebook um, audio from the Facebook Live was playing. I'm like, why can't I hear myself? <laughs> and let me put the link to the the website also. Yeah, that journal is in there also. I did something. Oh, there we go. I couldn't find the Zoom link. So we have several ladies still on who are not members yet. So if you are not a member, I put the link in our in the chat, um, cmwpnetworking.com. Head over to the membership page. Make sure you click the button and become a member. We have three different levels of membership. The first one is $60 a year. That's if you are a student of any level. The second one is the regular membership, which is $15 a month or $125 a year. And then if you are a senior, more seasoned woman and you want to be a mentor, you're over the age of 65, you can join as a uh, mentor for $65 a year. Um, we have committees. We're asking all of our members to participate on our committees. So I do not lie. Our committees are marketing and social media. We have a membership committee, a programming and events committee, and we have the CMWP book club. Um, once you become a member, you, we also have a member-only Facebook group. We have Manifestation Monday. Maybe you've seen our post. You have to go, Amory. Bye. Amory's going to sign up for, as a member right now. Um, <laughs> we have Manifestation Monday. Every Monday at noon, we meet for one hour. We discuss our goal from last week. Did we accomplish it? We discuss our goal for this week. Many of our members were on on Monday and they are working toward their goal that they set for this week. We also ask our members to read at least one book per quarter. Let us know what your book is. And we want you to set at least one SMART goal that you're going to work towards. That's SMART, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. Okay. So if you're looking for a network of professional like-minded women hit that button and join today 
Anybody, do you have any other questions or insights for Tay? Felicia says, thank you again, very enriching. Good time, good night, ladies. How was the sound quality? I'm using a microphone, just wondering. I think it was it was good with you speaking with the um the instruments. Do you call them instruments? Yeah. Okay. With the instruments, sometimes it wasn't clear what it was supposed to sound like. Yeah, Zoom is horrible for the sounds. I, I was supposed to go on the settings and say like quiet background noise, but I forgot all about that. It's best like on Facebook or something like that. But it's really best in, in person, a sound bath. So if anyone's yes. in, in Connecticut and is interested in a sound bath, let me know. Yes, Shirley said, I enjoyed it very much. And that's okay. You forgot to do the sound settings because I forgot to record and you're coming back and we're going to do it all over again. <laughs> no, this was so great because, you know, uh, we always working and we actually always forget self-care, which is so important. So it's like we just go, 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 go. And we don't need to, like, we never know how to just tap, pause and just relax. So this was some great tools. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, this was amazing. We have the Facebook Live. Kita, thanks for reminding me that we do have the Facebook Live. Now I have to figure out how to save that so I can put it hopefully <laughs> on YouTube. It's supposed to be on YouTube, so hopefully I can figure that out. You got um, this. Huh? I said, you got this. Yeah, sure I do. Sure I do. <laughs> All right, so we're going to see you on the Facebook group. Members who are on committees will see you on Slack. We will see you next month. Bye, ladies. Thank you, Tay. Bye, everybody. Bye.